Well, hello to you. And uh, I hope that you don't feel too bad today. Um, everybody's always in a state of flux, aren't they? You know, we, we go from really good to really awfully bad. Um, and then all points in between. So um, thank you for joining me. I thought that I would perhaps read um, an article that I wrote. Uh, obviously, I wrote it. And um, the, the, the plain title of it uh, at the time is Joshua Ben Levy and Elijah. Well, I suppose that sort of says it all, really. Uh, I should add, and me. Because um, I'll, uh, I'll tell you how it goes. I have met Elijah in his cave at Mount Carmel. You may have heard of the prophet Elijah, who unseen to us visits during the religious ceremonies of his fellow Jews, that includes me, uh, and during the rest of the year is busy helping the poor and the sick. Now he conducted his earthly ministry from 900 BC, or BCE, to 849. And uh, he was then taken up, it was recorded, in a chariot of fire there. So I had been asked if I would pray and ask for rain as there was a drought. I was actually in Israel at the time. So I decided, being prompted, if you like, you know, I sort of had this urge <laughs> to go to Elijah's cave. Uh, which is actually at the foot of Mount Carmel, and that was where I was staying at the top of it, actually, in a block of flats. And um, that's just one of the caves that uh, Eliyahu uh, stayed in, uh, because at the top of Mount Carmel, there's the oldest monastery, and it's called Stella Maris, and that is built over the place of another cave where Elijah stayed. And it was near where he had done a lot of healing work and recorded in the Bible that um, he performed uh, great miracles with the help of God, of course, <laughs> and, uh, and his guardian angels. And um, yeah, so there I, I decided I would walk down the mountain to tell, tell you how long ago that was. So now, while I was there, in a kind of cubby hole, what we'd know as a sort of cabinet, in the stone wall, there was sort of a hollowed out part, and it, had, it was covered by a blue curtain. At the far end of the cave that had been his home for a while, I saw a glow coming towards me. To my right, and as it came towards me, I saw a figure and I heard him say that he was Elijah, Eliyahu. Now, the conversation we had has been wiped from my memory. It was gone immediately as he left me. Amazed as I was at the encounter and remembering only the glow of light and the warmth of his presence and the upliftment and the sort of amazing feeling that I received, um, as I walked back up, it started to rain. As I walked back up that mountain, it did start to rain. Now, my cousin said her phone started ringing before I got back with friends from our spiritualist circle saying they knew I must have, I must have been praying and, and, you know, what, what had happened. So she told them all, well, you know, she's, uh, <laughs> she's gone down to uh, see Elijah at his cave. Now, if you're wondering about this amazing person, uh, this is a, a one report that's written in the, the Old Testament book of Kings, chapter 18, from verse 41. Now, as spiritualists, we all understand this. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go and get something to eat and drink, 
for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, go and look out towards the sea, because it's right by the sea, I should have mentioned, in Haifa. The servant went and looked and then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times Elijah had told him to go and look. Finally, the seventh time, his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. Now, you know, there'd been a drought. They hadn't had a rain for a long time in exactly the same situation, actually, as when I walked down uh, to ask. And soon the sky was black with clouds. A heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm and Ahab left quickly for Jezreel. Then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked his cloak into his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. Uh, you might like to read this account too from Kings chapter 19. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he'd killed all the prophets of Baal. This was after um, this um, you know, demonstration on the top of Mount Carmel I'd mentioned to you. If you go to Kings chapter 90, you'll find out all about that. Uh, right, where was I? Oh, yes. So, <laughs> so Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the gods strike me. And even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Elijah was afraid and fled, fled for his life. He went to Vesheba, Be Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there, this long-suffering servant. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, travelling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. So he just wanted to go with the people that he knew had gone before him. He wanted to be with them. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. You know, we think that bread and water is a punishment, don't we? But it isn't. It's a blessing if you're hungry and thirsty. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai the mountain of God. Remember. Now, this story is about Elijah and about a great sage who wanted to learn more about him. And the name of the sage was Rabbi Joshua Ben Levi. Now, I come from the tribe of Levi and I would love to think, because I know that my uh, grandfather told me that um, before our name was Deswalt, which we took when we uh, left uh, Persia, to go to uh, Holland um, in the 17th century, that we were Ben Levy. <laughs> so I would like to think that um, I'm related to him. Now, uh, not only did uh, Rabbi Joshua Ben Levy teach about purity of speech, uh, saying, and he said a person should never utter a single unclean word, but he taught that people should altogether speak less. And so they will more likely be able to avoid saying the wrong things. He said, if a word is worth a setter, silver coin, then silence is worth two. That's a bit wise, isn't it? Some of us should do well to think about that one. Now, so one day when Elijah was on his errands of mercy, he was met by Rabbi Joshua. Now, although usually unseen, by anyone, unless the prophet wants to be seen and recognised. This is uh, a known fact. 
Rabbi Joshua saw and recognized Elijah and greeted him respectfully. Then he begged the prophet to take him along on his journey. So uh, Joshua ben Levi asked Elijah, uh, he wasn't shocked that he saw him, he was just pleased um, if he could take him on his journey with him. Now, don't forget, uh, Elijah by this time had been in spirit for hundreds of years. So we're talking about two great mediums here. Where I go, Elijah replied, there must be no human companion. You see, no, no physical, earthly companion. Humans do not see everything. And what they see, they do not always understand. Pray be not curious. Let me go. Elijah's words only strengthened Rabbi Joshua's desire to accompany the prophet and benefit from his companionship. The sage continued to plead. I promise that I shall not weary you with questions and shall in no way interfere with your mission. Take me with you, master. Elijah replied. Remember, as soon as you will begin asking me questions to explain that which you will not understand, our ways must part. So, towards evening, the weary old travellers came to an old shaky hut of a poor couple. Now, I must say this, of course, that uh, Elijah would not have been weary. Only the physical person would have been the weary one, needing his energy and physical strength. You remember Elijah was told to to uh, get his strength together because in the physical that's what we need we also need the spiritual strength but the you know to to walk a long way uh in the physical sense we need our energy and our strength so both the man and his wife were sitting outside their home when they saw the two travelers they rose and in the true fashion of the children of abraham that's uh, the, the jewish people they welcomed the strangers to their humble home. What little food they had in the house, they gladly shared with the guests and offered them their beds for rest. They themselves made their beds on the straw in the cow shed that housed their cow. The cow was their only valuable possession, for its milk was their whole source of income. In the morning, the prophet and sage took leave from the kindly couple. As soon as they were out of sight, the prophet Elijah prayed that the cow of the poor couple should fall dead. Rabbi Joshua was terribly shocked and upset. Why should you repay for the kindness and hospitality of these people with such ingratitude? He wanted to explain, but he remembered the prophet's warning and kept his silence. You know, the, the silence is worth two uh, silver coins. All day long they wandered together, and the prophet taught Ben Levi many teachings without a word of explanation about his way with the poor couple. Towards evening they came to a fine mansion and asked permission to spend the night there. The rich man who lived there did not receive them with a friendly face. Grudgingly he permitted them to stay the night in his house, but offered them no food or a kind word. In the morning, as they were about to leave, they noticed a crack in the wall. Elijah did not say a word, but no sooner were they gone when the prophet prayed that the cracked, dangerous wall be restored to solid strength. Again, Rabbi Joshua was amazed. Why should the rich miser be spared the trouble and expense of repairing his wall, he thought. But remembering the prophet's warning, he held his peace. After a long and tiring day's journey, the two reached a city that had a beautiful house of prayer. The walls were made of marble and the benches of carved wood. The scrolls were richly adorned and the ark was a masterpiece of art. Here certainly we should be made welcome and treated with respect, thought Rabbi Joshua, but he was wrong again. After the evening prayers, no one seemed to take an interest in the strangers and none of the wealthy members offered them a bed and food. The prophet and the sage had to spend the night on the precious but hard wooden benches. When they left in the morning, the prophet wished the members of the community that they should all become aldermen of the city. Rabbi Joshua was sorely tried to keep his silence, 
what with this, his empty stomach and aching bones. The prophet's blessing to the unkind people puzzled him greatly, but he sealed his lips and buried his question deep in his heart. The companions reached another city. The house of prayer was not as beautiful as the one they visited the day before, but the people made up for it in kindness and hospitality. They enjoyed a rest in the best house of the town and were honoured like princes. When it was time to go, the prophet turned to the good people and said, May God grant that only one of you be a leader. This was the last straw. The sage was no longer able to control himself. Forgetting the prophet's warning, he exclaimed, Revered master, reverend master, far well, be it from me to tell you what to do. Yet it seems to me that you add insult to injury, that you reward good with evil and evil with good. P please explain to me your strange ways. Now, this is what Elijah said to him. I warned you that humans judge by the sight of their eyes, but there is more in life than meets the eye. According to our agreement, you will have to leave me now. But let me explain to you at least what you have witnessed and your heart will be able to live in peace. You see, the poor old couple who received us so nicely on the first night of our journey certainly deserved our gratitude. I saw to my great sorrow that that very day the woman was destined to die. We gave them an opportunity to do an act of charity and I prayed to God that she should live and that their cow take her place. Although they lost their most precious possession, they will be able to stay together for a few years more. He who gives life will also provide for their support. I see now, exclaimed Rabbi Joshua, but what about that rich miser and his cracked wall? There was a huge treasure buried beneath the wall. Had it collapsed? The miser would have found it. That's why. I could not have known that, of course, said Rabbi Joshua. Now, why did you bless the men of the beautiful synagogue who did not open their homes to us? That was no blessing, my friend, replied Elijah. A community where everybody is a leader is not a happy place to live in. This is also the explanation of my wish to the kind and hospitable citizens of the last place we visited. Let them have one respected and able leader who is dedicated to the good of all. There will be peace, harmony and cooperation in that blessed community and it will prosper. You have opened my eyes, dear master, exclaimed Rabbi Joshua. He said to him, Elijah said, go and teach our brethren the ways of God. Let them not be disheartened when they see the wicked prosper or the righteous suffer. For while man judges by the sight of his eyes, God looks into the heart and he rules the world with justice and mercy. Shalom. Peace be with you. The next moment, Elijah was gone. There. I hope you enjoyed that uh, little excursion into uh, olden times. and. As spiritualists, we understand that we get messages from the world of spirit. We also understand that we don't understand everything that goes on down here. You know, people are always saying, you know, why does God allow bad things to happen? Why does this happen? Why does that? Happen? Why isn't everything wonderful all the time? You know, but and we don't know. But um, you know, I, I suppose it in a in a small way. We can take heart from those stories and know that even if we don't know everything, there is somebody who does. And we can put our trust in that. As we say, we put our trust in God, just like Elijah did. And as uh, as uh, Joshua Ben Levi uh, did, too, um, and understood that he didn't understand. So um, this has been uh, just a, a little chat. Uh, about things that I think affect us as human beings here on this planet, here and now. Uh, talking about our ancestors, you know, we all come here through our DNA, through our heritages. Um, 
and our backgrounds, whatever they were, make us into the people we are here and now. Um, but it's marvellous to think that here we have absolute proof that, um, you know, that those who are in the world of spirit, who have lived down here for their span and moved back to the world of spirit where we all uh, belong, um, are able to communicate and send to us their support and even being able to speak with you now and tell you that, you know, when I think that I was actually, you know, given that opportunity because I went down to pray for rain into the cave that uh, Eliar, who uh, lived in for a while and used as a base, if you like, a base, a base at Mount Carmel, at the bottom of Mount Carmel, um, you know, it was really, it was just a cave uh, and uh, there was this little place where I'm sure that he himself would have would have gone in and, and, and prayed in because it, it, it was like a cabinet that we use in spiritualism, a thick darkness, the sort of thick darkness that is talked about uh, when they talk about Moses, um, who, who took 70 of the uh, elders with him into a tent where they sat in thick darkness to uh, inquire of the Lord. And I'm sure that that was also the place. And that's where I stepped into. And that's where I was, where I was, uh, I can only say blessed with, with the presence. I didn't expect to see Elijah uh, at all. Um, and, and I realized, of course, afterwards that uh, he only will show himself or be available to people as he sees fit. And of course, what we know is as well about those who are in the spirit realms, they only come when they want to, or, or when it's when it's allowed for them to come. So you know you can't always expect, um, you know, on an ordinary level, if, if you like to call it that, um, where mediums uh, relay information of their survival from uh, loved ones who have passed fairly recently, comparatively, um, you know, say in your own lifetime, shall we say. Um, and they come back to reassure you, to give you love and comfort and perhaps advice as well. Um, and uh, that they do that, but they, they only do that if they want to. You know, all the amount of asking will get you nowhere. Um, you know, uh, many a medium will tell you that they, they really wanted somebody in particular, but that person didn't come. Um, but somebody else would come uh, and that would be how it is. Um, and so you see, we also learn that that we are only blessed with their presence if they wish that to happen. And of course, the other thing is that, you know, there are very many different levels of spirit and spirit communication. And we understand, don't we, that our loved ones who want to come through to us will be very close. Um, and uh, people like Eliyahu which means just God, God, God is uh, with me, is with us. Um, Eli is is uh, God, my God. Eli, my God. Yahoo is Yahweh, uh, the tetragrammaton uh, Jahweh or Jehovah. So uh, that's what the literal translation of that title is, that name. Uh, we think sometimes perhaps that he was, he was, uh, given that name uh, because of his wonderful work um, as a title, but uh, it was his name anyway. So the thing is that, you know, uh, even from hundreds of years ago, we can get teachings and communication, and, and perhaps in some way he's been teaching us here tonight. I say tonight. I beg your pardon, those of you who are watching in different time zones, because, you know, as well as all the different dimensions and levels of spirit, if you look at it down here, there's all these different time zones and areas and geographical layouts and, uh, and um, you know, d different uh, demographics and all sorts of different places and spaces on the earth uh, that we all live in. And um, nobody actually, God never got a ruler out and put lines uh, and said, no, you don't go over that line, you don't go over that line. Um, this is another thing altogether. You know, because the whole world was made by the Almighty, 
and that's the whole world and all the human beings within it. And although uh, this was a story about uh, one particular group of people uh, who descended from uh, Abraham, um, it, it, it is also uh, a nice story for everybody to take on board because it, it rings true for all, all uh, humanity. And um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this little chat and um, I hope that you get every blessing in your life. And we can ask, can't we? We can ask. We can ask the Most High. We can ask Elijah to help. Um, particularly if there's a real problem. I'm not talking about, you know, we all have, you know, we all think that everything we've got wrong is really bad, but there are always people who are worse off. And uh, if we ask, you know, special, uh, special healing and so on. By the way, uh, there are lots of stories about Elijah healing people, bringing a, a, a woman's son back from the dead and things like that. So, you know, these old texts are full of mediumship and healing and uh, wonderful teachings. And yes, there are some things that we would take issue with, but we have to, uh, if you like, do a bit of forgiveness and think to yourself, well, these people were living in a time when, you know, it was a very, very beginning of humankind. You know, they had very little, very little. Um, they had no... Uh, none of the uh, benefits that we take for granted, you know, lights at the flick of a switch, antibiotics, you know, uh, vaccinations, immunization, all sorts of things. They didn't have anything. They had no painkillers that, you know, they could go and get from the chemist. Um, dreadful times, really. And uh, life expectancy was pretty short. So here we are. I hope that you have as good a next few hours as you can have, that if you are having problems, that you can ask uh, our loved ones who are in the realms of spirit to help you because they will help, they can help. And um, you may not have to go walking for miles with them uh, and be taught in that particular way, uh, but certainly they will, they will walk with you. Even if you can't see them, they will be walking with you. And they will be with you in your darkest moments. They will be with you when you're frightened. They will be with you when you wish they were. Um, you know, trying to impart that love still to you. So, and of course, this goes for our animals too. I must say that, of course. So I hope that you've enjoyed the conversation. I'll have a look at the, um, the, um, oh, joy, you look at, I've, don't forget to open the door for him at Pesach. Oh, I'll put some, I'll put some, um, there, there, there. Um, now, what that means, in, in the Jewish tradition, the religious tradition, um, you know, at the Passover, uh, Elijah is expected, as he's expected every Saturday night, by the way. So we could have said that as well, Joy. Don't forget every Saturday night. Um, and Denise, I'll put that up because <laughs> I always worry about that, you know. Uh, Oh, and, and Suzanne, thank you for the brooch. <laughs> you noticed this was was sent to me to cheer me uh, by Suzanne. Thank you. <laughs> and um, and 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 uh, here we are. Things happen to me down the center. I was thinking, yeah, absolutely, 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 and. Um, you know, Eli Elijah always has a spare chair at uh, family gatherings. Um, and, and as I said, especially uh, uh, at the end of the Shabbat and uh, other times uh, in the Jewish tradition. But the fact is that, um, there we are, Julie, good evening to you as well. <laughs> you're, you're now there for all time. You see, everybody that, that gets on this, um, you know, uh, you have to. Oh, wait a minute. I'll um, I'll try and uh, there. Oh, oh, Mary. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, you're very welcome, Mary. She's a wonderful medium too. There are so many great mediums, you know, um, out there, and uh, people don't know about them. They're working away and beavering away, 
um, you know, taking taking our spiritualist knowledge, you know, out to the population at large. And the fact is, it's so important, isn't it, to know that you can have this communication. And it may not always be as lofty as that which we get from from you know wonderful prophets and, and scholars and sages, but you know it, it's all good stuff, you know. And um, there you are. So I suppose I ought to uh, conclude our little conversation. I'm very pleased that you could join me um, because obviously, as we always say, you know, if it if it <laughs> if it wasn't for you listening, there'd be no point, would there? I'd be talking to myself. They say that, um, you know, that the worst thing is if you start answering yourself, well, I could do that as well. But uh, I wish you peace and harmony, comfort, health. I hope that your loved ones will be blessed with peace and harmony and health, will be comforted, and that you yourselves will find some uh, comfort in our spiritualist way of life, in our knowledge. And um, for those of you who are doing this work, you know, thank you. And um, on, that's on behalf of everybody because uh, thanks are a bit sh in short supply quite quite often. Um, but when the spiritualist churches and meeting places are open again, I hope that people who have enjoyed all the various things that they've uh, accessed on, on the internet during this time of, of pandemic, that they will find their way into one of our meeting places and, and, and enjoy the friendship and, and the love that's there. And we are uh, totally inclusive. I can only speak, I suppose, for the New Christian Spiritualist Society, but um, you know, other spiritualist organizations and groups are also welcoming. And we are you know, particularly keen to say that we are inclusive and um, we just love to have everybody join with us in this knowledge. And it matters not to us what background, what culture, you know, what you wear, what your sexual orientation is, your gender. We, you know, it, it's totally uh, not there for us. You are another, you know, spirit in a body and we love you so you are welcome so i hope that you've uh, enjoyed this evening and uh, i've enjoyed chatting with you and um i hope to speak with you again uh, i know that um there are so many uh questions and various subjects we can cover if you're interested there is a website well, there's a couple of websites there's the www.newchristianspiritualistsociety.com uh, which was uh, which was organised by Ref Right Reverend Nick Brown. Um, if you want to look on that, uh, there's lots of stuff on there. And there's also uh, the www.lynnguestdiswalt.com, and that's got loads and loads of stuff on it as well. And there's a little bit of potted biography of me as well, and a bit about you know my uh, other my other self as um, as an editor of uh, was uh, Psychic News. Um, and so on and so forth, and then my other kind of life as, um, you know, the promoter of, of uh, the ice sport of bandy in in, uh, in the UK, and uh, also, um, you know, uh, speed skating and the ice skating project. I'm trying to get the ice this big ice stadium uh, built here. So there's lots and lots of stuff, um, and I hope that uh, I will be speaking with you again and uh, I'll read another of my articles. That's the other thing. I write every month in the Psychic World newspaper and you can get that on subscription. Uh, and, um, you know, have a look on the uh, on, on my Facebook pages and, and you'll get the information from that too. So I'll say God bless to you. And uh, I know that people always want a message. There you are. I'm being prompted. So I'm going to open my spiritualist hymn book now and uh, read you whatever I got. Now, I cannot find thee still on restless pinion. My spirit beats the void where thou dost dwell. I wander lost through all thy vast dominion and shrink beneath thy light ineffable. I cannot find thee even when most adoring 
before thy shrine I bend in lowliest prayer, beyond these bounds of thought, my soul upsoaring, from further quest comes back, thou art not there. Yet high above the limits of my seeing, and folded far within the inmost heart, and deep below the deeps of conscious being, thy splendour shineth, there, O God, thou art. I cannot lose thee, still in thee abiding. The end is clear, how wide soe'er I roam. The law that holds the world, my step, my steps is guiding, and I must rest at last in thee, my home. There, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed that. I think <coughs> that they were listening to us, and the, and the other verse underneath that, God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides up in the storm. And there, I think the dog has said that we've come to the end of our meeting together. And uh, that actually proves to us, doesn't it, that they upstairs were listening to what we were saying. So thank God for God. God bless you. And uh, I will see you again. Now, I have to. <laughs> and the book. <laughs>